I once looked up to my cousin. I thought he was a great guy and we were close like brothers. I was also dating a girl. I was deeply in love with her and planned to marry her someday. I thought my life was perfect. One day I came home early because a colleague offered to cover my shift. I was pretty tired so I accepted and went home. Arriving home, I found them in bed, having S. Both of them were shocked to say the least. I told them I wanted them to be gone by the time I got back and left the house. They were gone by the time I did get back, but she left me a note telling me she was sorry and to call her when I'd calmed down. I didn't call her. I texted her saying that I'd gather her things and drop them off at Cousins in a few days and that she's staying with him now, not me. I followed through with that. It took about a week to transfer everything. Both of them tried to apologize, but I didn't have anything nice to say to them, so I said nothing. I just knocked on the door and handed the bags to whoever answered before leaving. My cousin called me multiple times to try to apologize, but I refused to accept it. Three years have passed since then. I went no contact with them. I didn't bring it up to the rest of my family or any of their friends. I'm not sure why. I just didn't. I got a call from a number I didn't recognize, so I answered. It was my cousin. He sounded really happy and was acting like he hadn't destroyed my life. He explained he and my ex were getting married and he wanted me to be his best man. I was so angry that he had the utter gall to act like nothing was wrong and lost my temper. I yelled at him and called him names before hanging up. He sent me a text telling me the offer still stood, and if I didn't want to be his best man, then he just simply wouldn't have one. A few days passed by and I had an idea. I texted him back and apologized. I sent a paragraph of BS saying I was still angry, but this could be an opportunity for the three of us to heal and move past it. He was overjoyed and said he'd pay for everything and he'd help me to pick out a suit if I wanted, which I accepted because I sure wasn't going to spend any money on his stupid wedding if I could help it. The wedding day came. I had spent the prior week writing a speech, putting all the negative feelings that I had bottled up over the years into words on paper. The wedding was pretty good. I'm sure one of them has some nice well-paying job or something because they must have spent a decent bit of money on this wedding from how nice it was. Our entire family was there, as was a decent chunk of my ex's family. Eventually, the time for my speech came. I just remember feeling really nervous as it built up to it, and my voice kept faltering when I was reading it out. But I didn't and still don't care. At least I got it out. I explained what these two horrible people had done to me. I called them the worst names I could think of and wished them the worst. Then I left. I was expecting some kind of dramatic moment from all the guests, gasps of shock, and all that, but there was none of that. Everyone was silent. On my way home, I got a call from my mother angrily telling me that I'd ruined the wedding, and both of them were so upset and she asked me why I'd do this. I told her that they deserved it for what they'd done to me, and everything I'd said in the speech was true. She kept defending them, so I swore at her and hung up. Since then, I've gotten several calls and texts from others in mine and my ex's family, angry I ruined the wedding. I've also received a few texts from people who were there being supportive and telling me they were there if I needed to talk. I'm not sure if I feel better having done this, but it did bring me great catharsis when people were telling me that the wedding was ruined. At least now they felt at the very least a fraction of what they've made me feel. Just a little edit to address some common questions. As far as I'm aware, the rest of the family wasn't aware of her cheating on me. They likely knew we were dating at some point, then we weren't. I've learned from previous stuff that I can't rely on my family for any kind of support, so I've been low contact with them since I moved out of my parents' house, which is why I didn't mention this to anyone in my family. A lot of people are also asking for the speech transcript. I wrote it in a Google Doc and read it out from my phone. The delivery was kind of lackluster. I sounded like I was going to cry and tripped over my words, but I managed to read it all out. It isn't verbatim what I said, but it's very close, as I was reading from this as a general script. Hello everyone. I'm not very good at public speaking, so apologies in advance. It's an honor to be at this wedding, and an even greater honor to be the best man. I was shocked that I was even invited at all, since the last time I'd spoken to the bride and groom was when I'd found them ducking in my own bed. X's name was my partner at the time, you see, but I don't think she got the memo that when you're dating someone, you don't duck their cousin in your partner's own bed. And it wasn't like cousin's name didn't know we were dating either. Who knows how long this slimy bunt was ducking her behind my back? Weeks? Months? For those unaware, X and I had been dating for two years. I loved her with all my heart and was actually saving up to get a proposal ring. Maybe if X wasn't such a W, 
cousin would be giving this speech instead, and I wouldn't have been struggling with mental health for three years. Anyway, I've heard 50% of marriages end in divorce. I hope yours is a messy one. From the bottom of my heart, duck you both. You ruined my life, and I will never forgive either of you. <laughs> That's savage. Honestly, what did they expect you to do, except the fact that he stabbed that knife in your back and basically caused you so much anguish and hurt? I'm amazed they were stupid enough to invite you. Not just invite him, ask him to be best man. Like, when I read that title and started reading, I thought the cousin was marrying some other girl, not his ex. I'm happy you ruined their wedding. I got mad reading this. It's the fact that your cousin had the audacity to ask you to be the best man at his wedding with your ex that cheated on you with him. He's a complete idiot if nothing else. You don't go from not speaking to each other for years after a conflict or betrayal to asking the person you hurt to be the best man at your wedding. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. They deserve what they got for hurting you and then inviting you to their wedding to hurt you again. Update. Some stuff has happened since the whole mess that was my cousin's wedding. My mom tried to talk to me, said she saw the post I'd made. I pushed her away for a few days before finally speaking to her. I'm struggling to find words to describe how things worked out between us. The easiest way to explain it is that we agreed to disagree on whether what I'd done was correct. I got a mix of messages from those who were present at the wedding. Some supportive, some telling me off. I was struggling a lot. I've just gone back to simply functioning, like I was before the wedding, after I came down from getting my own back. I don't at all regret what I did and I still feel satisfied that I got payback. I was making plans to take my own life about a month after the wedding. I hadn't told anyone for obvious reasons, but my mom, uncle and cousin, same cousin whose wedding I ruined, came to me and told me they'd pay for a private counselor since the mental health department of the NHS is under-equipped to say the least. I went to therapy, found a counselor who was very helpful. He taught me a lot. I got diagnosed with PTSD caused by the discovery of the affair. He's been a big help and has encouraged me to give casual dating a try, to build confidence in myself, and get used to rejection as a normal part of life. I signed up to a few dating sites, although I'm avoiding Tinder like the plague. My counselor specifically suggested I stay as far away from Tinder as I possibly can. I've not been very successful in that avenue, but it's pretty much in line with what I was expecting. I've talked to a few people and even got a date scheduled, but she stood me up and ghosted me, which hurt. I'm doing good though, much better. To summarize, my mother and father divorced when me and my twin brother, 28, were two years old. We both had to see our dad every other weekend, but most of the time our stepmom looked after us without him. When we were 13, our mom met our stepdad, and they got married a couple of years later. Mine and my dad's relationship deteriorated, and my mom and brothers did. My brother views me as both our parents' favorite, despite the issues with my dad. On to the conflict. When we got engaged, we got married November 2019. My husband and I expected to pay for everything. Any contributions would be a gift. My mom and stepdad ended up gifting almost 3,000 pounds, which is a lot for them, and was hugely appreciated. A couple of other family members contributed, again, with many thanks, and we put the money towards an incredible honeymoon. We paid for our wedding ourselves, as we didn't want any interference on the details, and I'll admit, we went overboard. Destination in two wedding dresses. But it was our money to spend like we liked. We make around the same and had similar savings. My brother got engaged in November 2021 and his fiance, 20 female, approached us all for wedding planning about a week ago, and things did not go well. She sat myself, my mom, and her mom down, and gave a list of expenses, contributions, which totaled around £3,000 for me. I didn't see the other lists. I immediately questioned what was happening, and thought the whole situation was ridiculous. She said that I had an extravagant wedding, and these contributions were the bare minimum. I excused myself to calm down, because at that point I was seeing red. I returned and explained I was happy to give her a gift for the wedding at my own discretion and would pay to be in the wedding if she wanted me to, but this list of requirements was unacceptable. The kicker here is she then informed me I was not in the wedding. These were contributions as sister of the groom, as her sisters would be bridesmaids. The argument escalated, and both of us said some awful things. When I called her a gold digger, she burst into tears, and I left to avoid dealing with her anymore. Later, my brother came to my house, and as soon as I opened the door, berated me about everything. All his issues with our parents and me with the way I view his fiancé seemed to come out all at once. 
To be clear, I am aware my parents favored me. I cannot control the way they treated him, and all I can do is ensure him I am not complicit as an adult. He essentially exploded, then left. He then texted me to say he could forgive me for my actions as a child, but my treatment of his fiancé was too far. I think this whole situation stems from him feeling that my parents contributed to me, but not him. Only, it's not traditional for the groom's parents to even contribute, and this is about my contribution, not theirs. Am I the a-hole for calling his fiancé a gold digger? Not the a-hole. Seriously? Does she really expect you to pay for her wedding? This is so far out of line, you can't even see the line anymore. My God, she sounds ridiculously entitled. Not the a-hole. I can see your brother being upset by the unfair treatment you received, but that wasn't something you did. And you did not owe him reparations by spending your money on his wedding. And you definitely don't owe squat to his fiancée. Not the a-hole. How entitled can your future sister-in-law be? You don't demand contributions for a wedding, especially not from the sister of the groom. Let your brother know that there are costs to being the golden child, as well as the scapegoat. Then let him know that he and his bride are entitled to zero from you. If that's the type of person he wants to be and marry, that's on him. But no one is going to demand money from you. My dad built an extremely extravagant house. Detached, six beds, eight baths, for himself, his now wife, and her two children to live in. Halfway through, he ran out of money, so asked my grandmother to act as guarantor for him to borrow more money to finish the house. She reluctantly agreed. He finished the house, but just before moving in, the second loan company, which grandmother had guaranteed, needed repaying. He buried his head in the sand, ignored demands, and it ended up with the loan company threatening to repossess his newly built house and my 73-year-old grandmother's house. In desperation, he asked my two younger brothers, 25 at the time, and I to mortgage his house so he could finish it, but more importantly to save my grandmother from losing her house. They weren't financially in a position to help. One brother had a newborn baby, so in desperation, I asked my fiancé, now husband, if he'd take out a joint mortgage with me to help save my grandmother's house. He reluctantly agreed. I need to make it clear we only did this to save grandmother's house. And the mortgage along with a 50k payment for my grandmother was enough to pay off the debtors. The deal was, my father and wife would pay the mortgage, and when they were in the position to, they'd get a mortgage in their name. Trouble is, they've never been in a good position. He is too old to get a mortgage, and she has a low-paid job. Fast forward eight years, and husband and I still have the mortgage. However, it has recently come to light that in the last eight years, my father and his wife have contacted the bank, impersonated my husband and I, and made numerous changes to the mortgage, including eight payment holidays and two new mortgage deals, all in our name and affecting our credit rating. The last mortgage deal was agreed a month ago by my dad and would have tied us in for another two years, which neither my husband or I want. I managed to cancel the deal by telling the bank that we hadn't authorized it, and they've opened a fraud investigation. I phoned my dad to confront him, and he hit the roof. He told me that had it been left to me, he would be paying 1K a month for his mortgage. Not my problem, not my fault. And that if I tried to sell the house, he would rip all the fixtures out, kitchen, bathroom, doors, etc., and you'll never be able to sell it. I haven't spoken to him since, and I'm losing a lot of sleep over it. Our next plan of action is to hire a lawyer and give them notice to vacate the premises before selling. This may be tricky as we don't have a tenancy agreement. We have a young family and our own home, which we need to protect. Am I the a-hole for evicting my dad? Wow, not the a-hole. Your dad is awful. You need to get control of any assets that is in your name because he sounds like he'd burn it to the ground just to spite you. Also, let the bank proceed with the fraud investigation. I would begin by putting a credit freeze, which requires a pen to access credit reports. Anytime someone applies for anything that requires a credit check, the credit bureaus would require a PIN to proceed. If a PIN cannot be produced, then any application will cease. Additionally, it would not hurt to pay for a credit monitoring service. You should also file a police report to build a paper trail against your father. It's to detour any future actions like the one described, to show credit companies that you are taking normal credit security precautions and are not in cahoots. And if there is any similar cases of fraud, then the police have an idea where to start their investigation.